Time to talk tech. Each Australian produces about 25 kilos of electronic waste a year and much of it ends up in landfill. One solution is to make our devices easier to repair and this morning we've got a great example of how to do just that with Image Matrix tech editor Juro Sanjuro. What have you got for us? This, the Nokia G22, and one of these, an iFixit repair kit, famous the world over for repairing electronics that have malfunctioned. So I got this just yesterday, and last night I spent, well, it took me a little longer than about 20 minutes, but an hour or so repairing the battery. Obviously, it didn't need to be repaired, but, you know, this phone's not bad. It's an entry-level phone, Tim, so it comes in at $349, and an Android phone that has a headphone jack i love that and it's a pretty good looking phone so as, as you can see it was working everything was ready to go the camera is not bad it's 50 megapixels and it's got a three-day battery life so uh, this is not a bad one so i've got a kit with i fix it so you can buy these with them uh so this battery replacement kit comes for 49.99 and then you use what's like a essentially like a uh, guitar pick to get it open and then you use these uh, other little um uh, devices to uh basically pull apart the other bits and pieces take a lot of little screws out you know once again i fix it make these specific tools for the phone now, it gets a bit scary here when you're pulling back uh, the protection for the motherboard and disconnecting the battery now the battery here looks a bit easier but i did take quite a while to get it off because there's a fair bit of adhesive there and there it is so there's the battery out pretending it's a new one i put it back into the uh, phone and uh, remember i'm just going off a few instructions off the uh, website and if you've done this, you've just paid like 50 bucks to replace the battery and you can do it all on your own. You put it back together, it clips in place. And here's the moment of truth. I press the button, Tim. It boots up into Android, gives me the thumbs up and the phone works. So in the space of about half an hour, I was able to uh, take the battery out and get this phone working again. So that's the Nokia uh, G20. And if your battery goes um or awry, it'll cost you $49.99 with the tools, and they're going to roll out displays too, so you can actually just change the display. That'll cost you $89.99, and even the charging port for $42.99. So it's great news that you can actually do stuff on your own and repair the phone. It's a great selling point for the uh, Nokia uh, G22. I reckon I would have ended up making a coffee table out of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not for everyone, Tim. It's not for everyone. <laughs> oh, mate. Seriously, I had a brain ache watching it. But wh why are smartphones so difficult to repair? It's a great question. And you know the, the quick answer? Glue. So everyone wanted to make the phones really thin. And this really started with the iPhone. And they've sealed the battery in all those years ago. And then everyone followed. So when anything happened, you had to go to a proper repair shop like this. Uh, this is at the Phone King guys. I've done a few things with these guys, and they're absolutely the, the guys I trust to, to fix my phone. But it's great to see we can do it on our own. So Apple, uh, obviously, you put everything together, and they want to make sure they use genuine parts. So it is quite difficult. But just for me humans to do it, you need a heating machine that sort of uh, it, it makes the glue less in its strength, and then you can pull it apart. So it's quite finicky to put these phones together. They're very, very difficult and unfair forgiving if you press them too hard so it's packing all that stuff together tim and sealing the battery which has been the issue you know it wasn't that long ago that i had phones that you could just pull the battery out put them back in samsung lg so obviously this is a great move that we can uh, do this on our own with the nokia phones apple has rolled out its uh, repairability system for phones and laptops but that's overseas at the moment. We're hoping to get that here soon, and that'll be mostly used by shops. But in the end, I think mostly you would take these, even with these repairs, uh, to a professional to do. But, you know, it's a really great idea. If, the, if, it, if it absolutely, there's no chance you get to a repair shop, you can do it yourself, and it's great. You know, I changed the car battery the other day, Tim, uh, and if I didn't have the right tools to do it, I, I couldn't pull it off. A lot simpler back then, but try and do it with an EV now. It's you're got multi, batteries everywhere. You're a multi-talented <laughs> human. Now, look, <laughs> I'm not a meteorologist, but according to experts, the big wet is over and we're going to get a lot drier mm. summer. How is tech playing its part to keep Australians cool? Yeah, so uh, El Nino is on its way. So this is interesting. A lot of data out there about how hot places are, particularly cities. So Google's 
uh, announced that they've expanded a really interesting thing, their tree canopy uh, program, which uh, has gone from 15 cities to 350, including Sydney. And what it does is enable us to use AI and other data, computer machine learning, to work out how do we um, make cities greener. So here's a heat map that shows you the, all the areas in Sydney where you see trees around. And the, the simple answer, Tim, is more trees make places cooler. So with a concrete jungle, the temperatures go right up. If they've got dark roofs, they absorb energy and everything becomes hotter. So this mapping has been crucial. I think Austin is actually using this data in real time, basically, to make sure they can put trees in the right place. So, you know, it's the word is it's going to be another hot summer. Well, it's going to be a hot summer for the first time in a few years after the big wet. So all this data coming together is going to help us plan out our cities better so we can have the, the green places where they need to be and just cut down on all this radiation that comes off structures that we build like you're seeing here. So uh, that's really important. So that's the tree canopy stuff. You can look that up online and that's from Google's AI. Now, just finally, uh, you've not only been fixing phones, changing batteries in cars, but you've rejigged your website and it's uh, just over <laughs> your right shoulder. Tell us a little bit about that. There it is there. So uh, look, after the show every weekend, I often get people emailing me about the segment and it's great, Tim, because uh, they're really keen to have a look at the tech we talk about. But uh, you can go straight to uh, imagematrix.tech and I've really expanded it now. So there's a lot more information. It's a lot easier to find uh, different subjects. So I've just been working hard uh, moving that all over and there's still some bits and pieces to do, but um, it's it's live right now and uh, I'm pretty proud of it. So that's imagematrix.tech and uh, Everything we talk about, um, you can always find it um, at least the next day or eventually on Image Matrix Tech. Well done. I've got a few things I need fixed. I'll send them over. I'll talk to you next <laughs> Sunday. Cheers, Tim. Good on you, mate.